Well, thank you for tuning in to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, June Rochelle, and today we have a very special guest. We have Sandy Caesar, and she's the program manager for adoption with the Department of Child Services. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, Sandy, I'd like for you to talk to the viewers a little bit today about foster care in the United States, particularly in the state of Indiana, and why this is an important issue for those that are watching. Um, sure. Foster care, of course, um, unfortunately is a necessity in our society. There are people um, many times for many different reasons who are unable to parent their children um, appropriately or uh, at a certain level. They may have um, had hardships in their lives or difficulties or um, perhaps even more serious issues. Um, and so children are removed um, from their biological families when there is a, a circumstance of abuse or neglect. Now, what about in the case of maybe a parents, unfortunately, are deceased due to an accident and there's not enough relatives, uh, you know, to consider? Are those... Those circumstances, those children would, would come into care also. Um, and we certainly... Um, if they were not uh, with family on their own through sort of their own family networking um, and DCS did have to become involved, we would make an effort to find family members to place them with first. Um, but certainly, like you said, if there's no one available, then they would be in foster care for that reason also. So can you give me a ballpark number or figure about how many children that, we, that you're looking at that are in foster care right now that you see? Um, I'm not sure of the numbers in Indiana specifically. I know nationwide there's about 400,000 children wow. in foster care. And out of that 400,000, is there a particular age group that are, that you see that people want to adopt or that the DCS is urging people ad to adopt, keeping siblings together, or, I mean, how does right. that work? Um, there are all ages of children in care from certainly from birth to 18 but when we narrow it down talking about adoption dcs our first priority our first um, efforts go towards reunifying the child um, and either with their biological parent or someone else in that family so oftentimes the very very young youngest children are either reunified with a family member, adopted by a family member, um, but they most often go home. So when you talk about adoption, the numbers in Indiana that we are actively recruiting for, there are about 200 children combined. About half of those have had their parental rights terminated in a court and half have not. Um, and so of those children, um, about two thirds of them are between the ages of 11 and 18. So our biggest emphasis in recruiting families for children are for older children, like I said, between 11 and 18, and sibling groups. About one third of our children that we're recruiting for um, adoptive families are a member of a sibling group that we would like to place together. Now, Sandy, tell me why it's important for older children to be adopted. Well, um, the statistics are not good for children who age out of foster care. Children who become 18, 19, 20, 21 without any legal type of um, permanency, without an adoptive parent, without being reunified with their um, biological parent or with some type of legal guardianship or something. Um, the numbers are bleak. Uh, the statistics for those children who age out are not good. Um, they often don't finish school. They often can't access health care. And so their instances of illness and disease are higher. They often fall into substance abuse. Of course, when you don't finish school, it's harder to find a job. It's harder to find a home. So there's greater incidences of homelessness and that sort of thing. And I think if, if we think about ourselves at the age of 18 or even 20, you know, um, 
went to college, got our first job, whatever we were doing at that age, there probably are not many of us who did it without the um, support of some adult in our life. And it's very important that they, that children in foster care have that same thing. I think that is such an excellent uh, amount of information that you've given me and the viewer because you mentioned health care and the ability to finish school and go on beyond high school and go to college. Uh, you've got to have a place to live in many instances right. to attend college, to be accepted in college. You have to have a permanent address. Um, and I think that that is really important that as what I think I hear you say is that viewers, that anyone watching considering fostering or adopting a child, that older children should definitely be given an opportunity to have that support right. and uh, wisdom that a, a solid family could give. Now, speaking of solid family, <laughs> what qualifies a person or persons uh, to be considered to be a foster parent or an adoptive parent? There is really an extensive um, preparation process. Um, there is training and depending on um, whether you're becoming a licensed foster parent or just pursuing adoption without the licensure, there's still training for both and the initial training is the same. Um, if you're a licensed foster parent, then there are actual annual training hours that you have to get in order to maintain your license. Um, but in that initial preparation process, like I said, there's training, there are home visits, there are background checks, um, local as well as national checks, um, reference letters, uh, um, health checks, there need to be forms filled out by your medical doctor. Um, so like I said, there is quite an extensive um, preparation process involved. And um, when I worked more directly with families, I used to ask them, I know it feels invasive, but if, as a parent of a child, if you needed somebody else to take care of your child tomorrow, you knew that you weren't going to be able to, what kinds of things would you want to know about that person? And um, these are our children. These are Indiana's children. These are children in the care of department services and we, child services, and we need to know that they are going into homes where they are not going to experience more hardships than they already have. You brought up two things that really stick out to me. I wonder what would happen if those guidelines were given to people that were just going to have children in general. My right. goodness. <laughs> the bar would be, wow, that right. might change some things. Uh, one other thing you mentioned was you said home visits. Now, there's been a few stories in the news about tr very tragic things happening where people show up at the door and say that they're uh, representing the Department of Child Services. Right. What kind of credentials should someone who's coming to a person's home uh, to uh, conduct any type of interview on site or whatnot or uh, just a follow-up visit? What kind of credentials should they have? Um, anybody who works for the Department of Child Services should have a state badge. And I'm pointing here because I usually wear mine on a lanyard, um, which many folks do. They could carry it on a clip or something. But they should have a state-issued badge, which will say State of Indiana across the top, DCS. It will have their name and their picture on it. So then if someone was to come to the door uh, without a viewer watching opening up that door, they could look at that name and go make a phone call and sure. say, is this person, and find out ex just like that from that credential. I don't know exactly, I don't do that part of it, so I'm not sure who they would call, but certainly, yes. I they mean, would have a name. Right. Exactly. Right. Okay, that is, that's good information to know. So when you start to uh, get people interested in becoming a foster parent or adoption, what's the first step that they should take? Um, if they are interested in um, adoption specifically or foster care, um, the Department of Child Services has a phone number, 888-25-ADOPT, A-D-O-P-T. Um, if they call that number, it is going to route them to one of the adoption specialists um, around the state. It will direct them to the one that's in the region where they're calling from. Um, that adoption specialist will be able to speak with them on the phone to ascertain if they are interested in foster care or not. 
um, and really answer any questions they have, kind of discuss what the process will look like, and then get them rooted off to the direction. If they want to go foster care, put them in touch with a foster care specialist. If they are interested in adopt only, get them to one of our contracted agencies who do those adopt only home studies. Um, but really, I would start there, 888-25-ADOPT. Now, do, when, you're, when you're looking at families, does it matter the ethnicity of a family? Let's say there are Latino children and a black family wants to foster or adopt, or if there's a Caucasian family and there's Asian children and they want to adopt, how, how is all that worked out? Right. Um, a cultural identity for children is very important in um, where you can place a child, and especially a child who's old enough to, to voice a preference. Um, but we are looking for safe, stable families who will um, love those children in. And more importantly, I say it all the time, love is not enough. Um, children who come from a background who have experienced trauma really need someone who has a great capacity for empathy and who is going to be able to hang in there with them through, through the tough times. And that is going to be more important than anything. So it sounds like that they have to have uh, an unwaverable commitment. Absolutely. Of sort of like a covenant that we're going to be here right. for you until the end of time. Absolutely. No matter what. Absolutely. That sounds like a, a, a pretty good uh, standard to have. Yeah. Should be that way for biological parents <laughs> as well. Yes. Um, well, Sandy, I just want to let you know we really appreciate you coming on and giving all of this information out. Um, it is uh, sad when children end up in foster care where they have to be adopted. However, agencies such as the one that you work for provide a place, an interim, where people can be sought out or people can inquire about what they can do. And I'm sure that there are so many people who have the compassion, the love, the steadfastness that you mentioned, and the wisdom. They can help bring up a child right. and give them the life that maybe they have been tr deprived of earlier on in their life. Sandy, thank you so much for joining us today. And to our viewer, we thank you so much for tuning in with us at Joy at Our Town. We really appreciate it every single time you turn us on. Be sure to like us on Facebook. I'm your host, June Rochelle, and we'll see you next time.